Hi booktube, my name is Sarah and welcome to the Bookish Knitter. Today I am coming to you with day three of Vlogmas. So proper introduction, proper video. There will not be two videos coming out today, I assure you. That was just an anomaly yesterday so I could get kind of caught up, if you will, because my goal is to put these up on the day of, because um, I'm filming them in the morning and then I figure I'll put them up later on in the day, have them scheduled to go up later on in the day. So it is Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. Um, yeah, so I am excited. Uh, I have been enjoying doing this so far. I didn't know. I think the whole thing is, is that I didn't put thought into it beforehand, <laughs> like most good things in life. I had not planned on doing this, and I think that by just doing it, it's making it a little bit easier because it doesn't... This is just me, and this is, I know a lot of you are loving seeing the crafting stuff, and thank you guys all so much. In the previous videos that came out yesterday, a lot of you gave me numbers to pick books from, so I've got the book picked for today. Um, my crafting plans have changed ever so slightly. I will share that with you guys in a minute, but let's jump into the books first. Unfortunately, I have nothing finished. Um, yesterday was a lazy day. I have to admit, I was working from home. It was kind of quiet. Um... So I had a bit of a lazier day. I should have been doing some reading, but I wasn't. Um, but I have decided that the one book I'm reading um, that's available for my library on audio, I'm going to go back listen to it on audio. It's, I, I'm almost done it, and I figure I can get it done probably on my way to work. Um, probably this morning, and then on my way to work I can get it finished. So I'd like to get another book done this month. would be great. So first of all, I am still reading, of course, Christmas on Peachtree Lane by Jules Bennett. Um, I am about 100 pages into it now, so there's where I am. I am enjoying this one. I don't have much more to report from yesterday. Um, it's a great little cute contemporary romance, and I'm enjoying it quite a bit. I do know that, well, Jules Bennett typically writes for the Desire Line for Harlequin. So her books can get a little bit spicy, so I'm going to see where this one goes, like in terms of heat level. And of course, I will report that back to you. And the other thing, um, for the books that I'm reading, um, I've been doing this pretty much all year. There is a another booktuber, I can't remember who it is, who created this like spreadsheet where you give a number association for different parts of the book, like characters, setting, plot, writing, stuff like that. C-A-W something, I can't remember. I think some of you might know what I'm talking about. I altered the spreadsheet to include a column for holiday uh, because I do, I read only really holiday books in December. However, I do tend to read them throughout the year. And that's a big thing for me is how much holiday, how much Christmas is in the book. I mean, if the title says Christmas or if there's like a Christmas tree on the cover or, you know, blatantly you can tell it's a holiday no novel or novella or whatever, how Christmassy or holiday is it? Because that's a big deal. And my friend Brie and I have been talking about that, that it's like you get these books that are Christmas, but they're just set at Christmas. There's no real Christmas feel to them. And that's what I think a lot of people look for when they're reading holiday books. So when I do my reviews for books this month, I'm going to also talk a bit about how much holiday is in the book, just so you guys are aware of that, if it's something that's important to you. And if not, it is it is what it is. Like for example, when I finished reading um, The Fates One by uh, Rainbow Rowell, why does that title keep escaping my mind? If the fates be merry, I think I can't remember. I know it's a line from a Christmas song. But anyway, um, that one was not really holiday. I mean, I think out of the 10, like you, you rate a book between 1 and 10, I think I gave it like a 4 on the holiday scale because, yes, it took place at Christmas, but it really didn't feel festive. <laughs> but to be fair, it the bulk of the little short story takes place in December of 2020. And I think that, that last year's Christmas for a lot of people was not exactly really Christmassy, to be fair, right? So, but still, anyway, so I am still reading that one. The one that I'm going to grab on audio today on my way into work, um, when I'm done filming this, I think I'm going to do some stitching and listen to it for a bit, is Christmas Criminals and Campers by Tanya Kappas. I mentioned the other day, I'm not a huge fan of the narration on this one, but it'll, it's fine. It's, it's, I can listen to it and get it finished. It's not a long book. I'm 60% of the 
way through it, but I do have a busier day today at work, um, according to my schedule. Yes, like from what I saw yesterday. So um, I want to get this one done. It, it's a shorter book. I should be able to get it finished. So yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm feeling audiobooks. So maybe maybe we'll get some more audiobook listening time and we shall see. So yes, yeah, so I'm still reading that one. Um, it is from Kindle Unlimited. So if you want, it's a cozy mystery series. I will talk about it in tomorrow's Vlogmas because like I said, my goal is to get it done today. And I did do a little bit more listening last night to um, my book on the Glow Sap from Harlequin. Um, anyone who is in North America, Harlequin is doing a sale today. They do a sale every Friday. It's buy three books, get 30% off. So in case you would like to indulge. I will be as soon as I am done filming this video. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I do love, I, I, I know Brie was mentioning because December the 1st, of course, was on Wednesday and all the new books were released and Brie went and placed an order. She says, I couldn't wait till Friday. And I'm like, you silly girl. <laughs> I like a good sale. <laughs> so it's not a, like, it's not a fabulous sale, but it's a sale. You know what I mean? So um, I am about 15% of the way through this one now. The heartwarming books do tend to be longer. I think the print copies come in at, come in at just under 400 pages. I think they're around 70,000 words. So these are a bit of a longer book compared to some of the other Harlequin books, but I'm still reading A Merry Christmas Date by Cindy Powell. I always have to double check her name. I want to call her Sydney, but it's Cindy. So yeah, so I'm still reading that one as well. So that's exciting. Um, I'm going to bookmark that so I don't have to keep flipping for it the next time to show you guys. But I'll probably be reading that for like a week or so. So you're going to see that in like every video. Um, so that's my reading. Um, like I said, nothing to report. Cheers. Morning coffee. Got to have some morning coffee right now. It is 8.30. I don't have to leave here till 10, so I've got lots of time. Um, my tea from yesterday. I saved the packaging so I could show you guys. For those of you, again, in case you didn't see yesterday's vlog. Candy apple tea. My gosh, you guys, this was delicious. Apple and caramel. It was so, so good. My mom's like, that smells amazing. Can I try it? So I gave her a sip of it. She's like, oh, that's delightful. And I said, yes. <laughs> this is one I could see myself buying more of for sure. It was really, really good. So... If you are shopping at Adiago Tees or whatever it's called, um, these people, if you're shopping at these people, <laughs> candy apple. I, I definitely recommend the candy apple. So let's find out what today's tea is. Uh, today is, of course, the third. So let's see. It's right here. Number three. So let's pop this one open. Oh, I see green. Ooh, this one sounds yummy. We have, ooh, this one sounds really good, you guys. We have here citrus green. So it's like a green tea and it looks like with like lemons and limes. Premium green, green tea with the zesty aroma and flavor of lemon and lime. I'm intrigued. I'm a huge, I love green tea. Absolutely love green tea. It's one of my favorites. And a friend of mine said a while ago, she was reading a study online that said that if you drink green tea, it'll help you lose weight. And I said, if that's the case, I should be back to like, I don't know, my birth weight at this point. <laughs> I drink a lot of green tea. <laughs> but no, this one sounds really good. So of course, I will report back tomorrow. The other thing I got yesterday, my husband had to go to Walmart to pick up a few things for dinner. And it's hidden behind the tree on the bookcase. But he got me one of the cheap, like, dollar advent calendars, like the kind we had as kids, with the little chocolate behind the door. I was so thrilled. <laughs> I know, as like, because I had to catch up, so I had to eat two of them yesterday. Um, it tasted like Christmas from when I was a kid. Does that make sense? I, I know, you know... Uh, it's the cheapest chocolate. I know that now they have like Ferrero Rocher and Lindor and, you know, Reese's Pieces and like all these and Kinder. The Kinder Advent, like Kinder Eggs, I think you guys have them in the States, but they don't have the toy inside them. But Kinder has an Advent calendar. They have a boy's version and a girl's version. Let's not go there. But um, they're $25. I'm like, it's an Advent calendar. It's got chocolate. I'm not about those premium chocolate calendars. Like, yes, I did spend some money on this, but 
for the chocolate calendars give me the old school ones that we had as kids but the other thing I found now I don't know are these just in Canada let me know because this is a staple of my childhood but I found this at Walmart last week it's the Terry's chocolate oranges um the original Terry's chocolate orange so it's orange chocolate um but they come also in a like they look like an orange like they're the size of a clementine I guess you would say and I always used to get one in my stocking as a kid and this tastes like Christmas as well like do you know that there's just some things that taste like Christmas like you know what I mean so I found this at Walmart yesterday or the other day in a bar form and I like snatched it right up they've got different ones now they have like a dark chocolate one a white chocolate one but the original one to me is always so let me know U.S. friends U.K. friends are these available where you are and if they are if you have not tried it and you'd like orange it's at first you might think I don't know but no I'm telling you they are delicious absolutely delicious so I'm just showing you all the candy this morning I haven't even had breakfast yet so on to the book so my first pick I went in order of people posting and I've written them all down so I will get to another one tomorrow but Jess um picked for me the numbers 2 1 and 50 so my second bookshelf the first shelf on that shelf and book number 50 and we got another kiss book you guys because we had a kiss book yesterday and this is also a Christmas one I just I'm so happy that that's how it worked out so we have mistletoe not required by um, Ann Oliver so I am really looking forward to this one it looks super cute so it says tis the season to be daring this Christmas Olivia Wishart uh, is determined to throw off the shackles of the past and have fun and nothing says fun like a glamorous Christmas party so wearing a brand new red dress and some seriously high stilettos nervously clutching a glass of champagne she's finally ready to start living life to the max olivia had thought that pre-party nerves would be the only thing to get her heart racing until a view even more spectacular than the glow of the sydney harbor oh it takes place in australia oh fabulous catches her eye the drop-dead gorgeous man with the steely black eyes is everything olivia has ever wanted and this Christmas, she's not going to wait meekly under the mistletoe. Ah, don't you love it? Oh, this is going to be so good. I cannot wait. Oh, yay on that one. So that one should be really, really good. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Jess, um, for picking those numbers for me. So I think she has another pick for tomorrow, too. So, yeah, I will report back. But again, for those of you who, again, I will try not to repeat this every time, but... Um, I am doing a challenge to myself to pick books to read next year. So off of all of my category shelves, I need three numbers. One number between one and four, another number between one and four, and a third number between one and 75. And just post them in the comments below. If I need them, I will get to them. And um, essentially these are all gonna be put to the side and I'm gonna pick two every month to read next year. So on to the crafty things. So onto the blanket scarf. I don't know what I have decided this is going to become yet, but I put my second square in yesterday. So there we go. There's the one that I had picked yesterday. So I did get into the gray. I think I showed you guys that it was self-striping. So do you see how it like stripes? The next color I think is a navy blue. Um, so yeah, so that's exciting. So there's my two. And then what I'm going to do today is I'm going to add a square up here and then a square up here. So I always like, I'm always building a perfect square is my goal. And then as the, as it grows, if it gets to a certain point and I like the width of it, I'll just turn it into a scarf. Um, or I might just continue and let it become a blanket, but it will be a square blanket because that's kind of the way I am building this one. So yeah, so I'm really liking the look of that so far. So let me pick today's yarn from my um, big bag of yarn. <laughs> my big bag of minis, and I have a lot more where this came from. So let's reach in here and grab one. What do we have? Ooh, that's pretty. So this is a variegated. It looks like it's like baby blue. It's not going to focus for me. There we go. So we've got like baby blue, gray, black, a lot of white. That's going to be fantastic. Really, really good. So let's refocus there. So that will go into the blanket today. Actually, that's what I'm probably going to do before I go into the office this morning um, while I'm listening to the audiobook because I will not, I'll be taking lunch today, but I'm going to be using it to drive home because I will be home this afternoon, like for my afternoon bit. 
So the difference, the other change to my crafting is that I had for, not forgotten. I knew I had bought this pattern because I literally bought it like a week ago. And, oh shoot, I'll have to show it to you on my Kindle Fire. And <clears throat> I had wanted to stitch it and I had the fabric for it and I had some of the floss for it, but I didn't have everything. So last night I made the decision that I really wanted to stitch this. I really wanted a Christmas piece to work on in December. I will not get this done for Christmas. I am fully aware that this is not going to be done in time for Christmas. But my thought process is instead of picking a new project every single day, is that I'm actually going to work on this project. This is going to be kind of like my focus piece in December. I'm going to work on it on Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays throughout the whole month of December. And then, um, and then on Mondays and Wednesdays, the days I have to go into the office, I'm going to pick a knitting project to work on. Um, because knitting tends to be a bit quicker for me. I've got a sweater and two pairs of socks on the needles. So I'll show you those on Mondays and Wednesdays. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, the days I get to work from home, I, um, I have the extra time in the morning because, and the extra time at night because I'm not doing the drive. So I have a bit more stitching time and stitching tends to take a little bit longer. Um, so I will pick a cross stitch pattern, something other than this one that I'm going to be working on. So let me show you this pattern first. It is adorable. The designer is called Autumn Lane Stitchery. There it is. And it's just, it's just delightful, you guys. Absolutely delightful. It is the most charming pattern. It is called, bear with, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. How cute is that? How cute is that? And they did an alternate design, okay? So there's actually two different designs you could do here. And I'm actually going to be doing the alternate because I like it better. So if you see here above the word town, you see like in white, it's Santa with the reindeer, right? Um, and then up here, you've got some snowflakes, right? So the alternate design that they did, here it is, is this. So instead of Santa above the word town, they just added some more snowflakes. But do you see up here? There he is with the reindeer. And if you look at the front reindeer, he's got the little red nose. That's the version that I am doing is the one with Santa up there. I just, I don't know what it is. I just think it's super, super cute. Um, and I love the little village here. It's just so precious. And I'm doing it on this dark navy fabric because it really makes everything else pop. Um, their patterns are fabulous, you guys. Absolutely fabulous. If you are a cross stitcher, I highly recommend that you check them out. Like I have a couple of their patterns. I've got a Halloween one that I'm working on. Um, it's called Moons Out, Brooms Out, and it's a witch on a broomstick. It's they're, they're just amazing. They're absolutely amazing. So I do have a cross stitch bag. It's got little foxes on it with their little uh, Santa hats. Um, and I did start working on this last night, even though I said I'm going to work on it when or Thursday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I did, I couldn't help myself when I started last night. So I started on the wording. So I've got the T started. So I'm just going to be adding, but sorry, I almost just dropped my laptop. <laughs> I'm leaning against it. Whoops, better not do that again. But yeah, there it is. So on this, I had the fabric already. I just needed to pick up a few floss things. So I will show you this tomorrow and see, show you guys the progress if I, however much more I get done on it. I think I'm going to finish the word town. Um... And then I think I'm going to do some of the snowflakes above. And then I think I'm going to start on Santa. I think Santa needs to, to get started being worked on. So yeah, I am really, really loving that so far. It's, it's really cute. I like the variegation in the, um, in the letters. Those are three different colors that you're using. So yeah, it's really, really cute. And I like it a lot. So yay. I am very excited. And here, in case you guys are curious, that there's like all the flaws. <laughs> <laughs> for this one. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be really, really fun. Um, and I'm going to, I think that I'm going to get some really good progress done on this in the month of December. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I have to show you guys. I don't think so. I think that that is it. Um, again, we're right around the 18 minute mark. So I'm glad I'm doing these every day and hopefully tomorrow I will have a book to talk about a book that I finished. So fingers crossed on that one. But anyway, guys, until my next video, which will be tomorrow. So side note, I made a decision to not stress myself out this December. I am loving doing these. It takes me 20 minutes in the morning to sit down and talk to you guys, 
you know, like for today, for example, I don't have to put any pictures up and I think I'm going to do that. Like if I'm sharing a book with you guys that I listen, that I read either digitally or on audio, I think I'm literally just going to hold up my tablet with the book cover on it just to make it easier for editing. So I don't have to insert pictures or anything like that. You know, really 20 minutes to film another, you know, maybe 20 minutes to edit and export it and then I can get it posted. So really it's not taking much out of my day. So that being said, I don't, I think these are going to be the only videos that I'm going to be doing December 1st to the 24th, but I have a plan for the last week of December. So if all works out according to the way that I want it, you guys are going to see a video from me every single day in the month of December. <laughs> So all the other videos that I would have done, like, for example, like, you know, anticipated reads video and, um, what else did I have planned? I have another one of those blog tours from Harlequin that I'm going to be doing. Of course, my January TBR, all those videos are going to come at the end of the month. Um, so stay tuned for that. Obviously there will be no weekly vlogs. Those will kick back in, in the new year, but I thought that this would be kind of a fun way to celebrate the month of December. Let's chill out. Let's take things easy. And, uh, and yeah, so that's it. Okay. I'm, I'm rambling. I gotta go. I'll talk to you guys later.